My name is Mark Rivett and I'm the editor of the Journal of Family Therapy. At the 2011 Association for Family Therapy conference, the journal has hosted a series of podcasts. And this is one of those podcasts. I said, oh, how are you doing? Uh, you didn't come back. She said, we didn't need to. I said, well, what happened? She said, I'll never forget it. Um, you were in the room with me and my husband and you sat there and you looked at me and you pointed to my husband and you said, he will never be the man you want him to be and never make the changes you want him to make. And I thought, you know what, he's right. <laughs> so I went home, straight after that session I went home, packed my bags and left. Uh, you're Jed Smith, uh, family therapist in the UK, yeah. based up in Liverpool. Um, and at the conference in 2011 you've given both a presentation and a workshop and you chaired the opening panel of experts. Um, so in all this time, I think I'd be interested in hearing what kind of message you have for contemporary family therapists. What is it you'd like them to think about in terms of their practice at the moment? Well, you say in terms of practice, and that's uh, I think precisely what, what I think most about, because there's a lot about politics and the importance of promoting our discipline and our profession and research and getting the at the top tables of politics and the media and being involved with commissioners, all of that really important stuff and people are doing that. But my own emphasis is on practice and clinical skills and what we do in the room. And probably the single biggest aspect of that for me would be under the umbrella of language. Language, the use of language to me is what I've written about, what I presented on mostly, and what I'm most interested in. How do we talk with people in sessions in ways that are helpful to them? I think that's so crucial. Yeah, it's, it's everything to me. And, and how is it that what you're saying about the language that we're using now is different from the kind of conversations we've had about language in the past yet? Yeah. I think there's more of an emphasis on what you might call straight talking um, and different types of um, relationships, conversations, to use that buzzword. Um, my own article was called Cut the Crap, which says something about my own approach to this. Uh, Possibly because as I get older, I'm turning into a, a, a less patient <laughs> therapist, possibly, but I kind of feel more like if we can find graceful and helpful ways of cutting through things, getting to the nub of issues that people are struggling with and, and dealing with those, and sometimes in challenging, provocative ways if necessary, obviously all, always bearing in mind therapy, therapeutic efficacy, then I, I find that really helpful and I think people appreciate it. Because people can talk a lot, to be frank. Families, clinicians, presenters can really, really talk. And to be honest, I sometimes think, you know, 20 minutes can be plenty to say all you've got to say. <laughs> Even though I spoke for 45 myself, uh, I think people can say a great deal. And sometimes we have to get that balance between paying respect to people's stories, hearing people's narratives, uh, but also getting beyond that. Development, as I say, really graceful uses of language in order to, to make that more effective. I noticed that the way you talked a little bit earlier, you were talking about a change in the therapist mm -hmm. which enables them yeah. um, to be more straight talking. Yeah. Have you got any thoughts about what has to happen for therapists to be able to be in that place where they can be more straight talking? Mm -hmm. Well, several things I suppose. One is being authentic to ourselves and with people, with families who seek our help. And I think when, we, when we're not authentic, it's, it's obvious, people, people know. Mm -hmm. I think um, being respectful of people, we can't just shut people up, mm -hmm. diss them and criticise them and be path pathologising in their ways, but we can still, you know, um, we can still use our therapeutic skills to move things on. And, and the more I do this, the more risks I take in doing this, the more I find people, people actually appreciate it. Uh -huh. They don't say, well, hang on a minute, I need to tell you a great length, mm -hmm. all that I've got to tell, because mm -hmm. uh, I think people, people appreciate that. There is a kind of idea that, you know, only when I tell you everything, only when you know as much as me about this, would you then possibly be able to help me, <laughs> yeah. whether it's therapy or supervision mm -hmm. or consultation. And I think finding the art of cutting that down so that we can get to the nub of the issue and help people to bring out bring out the core questions and dilemmas they struggle with, as I say, whether consultees or families or whoever. And that can be done very efficiently. It doesn't have to be an hour. Okay. 